Hello my friends, thank you for uh, your support on this channel. Thanks for the recent subscribers. Had a bit of a growth in the last few weeks and I'm really happy about that. Uh, thank you for uh, doing that. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed and you watch my videos, please uh, consider subscribing. Thank you for hitting the like button too. That helps a lot with the videos. Just keep in mind, I don't monetize anything. Um, I won't be uh, seeking sponsors or anything like this. Um, and we are seeking to grow Buddhist.cafe, which I talked about in the previous video, so I won't talk about it here. But if you haven't joined Buddhist.cafe, please consider joining and helping grow a uh, global Buddhist community, uh, supporting uh, Buddhists everywhere. So please uh, consider that as well. So today's topic um, is a bit of a, uh, let's say it's going to take a little bit of time to unpack this, uh, the reality of deceit. Why do I talk about the reality of deceit? Shouldn't we all talk about uh, how the world is pure and positive and optimistic and nobody lies, nobody follows their interests and there's no such thing as deception? <laughs> I, think that, I think that's unrealistic. Like you and many other people, before I was a monk, uh, I worked like everybody else. I had my own business, uh, I've had families, I've, I've had <laughs> two families. Um, I've uh, had a lot of experience before becoming a monk. And I myself, before coming across Buddhism, engaged in some really unskillful behavior, uh, not knowing, not knowing about uh, the, the, the Noble Eightfold Path myself and the, the, the complex, the complexity of the Noble Eightfold Path. And I'll explain some of it here. So please sit back, relax, uh, maybe grab a cup of coffee. Now pause the video, grab a cup of coffee or tea because this is going to be a long one and a, and a deep one. So here goes, right? So lately I've been hearing uh, and watching and, and researching this thing about the war in, uh, unfortunately, in, U in Ukraine and Russia and uh, all the wars that are going on in the world today. The economy right now, the inflation, everything getting expensive, uh, a lot of trickery going on, a lot of misinformation going on. Um, and why is all this happening? Well, I don't have uh, six hours to do a video. I think my, my, my phone can't, ta can't take that. <laughs> but it requires a long conversation, right? So what I'm going to do is unpack a few things. And then I guess as we go, we can uh, talk about more and more about this. But this thing about, like, I was uh, watching a video by Douglas, Colonel Douglas McGregor, who was talking with, uh, who was it, Judge Napolitano, I think. Um, and a lot of the, his things were accurate and truthful. But one thing that American policy and American business, but I think Western business in general, is about we only do what's in in interest to us. We only follow our own interests. If it doesn't interest us, why are we involved? And I think contracts today and a lot of business works around that. Now in Buddhism, right? Now this is the positive part of the video, right? So in Buddhism, the Buddha talks about right action, right? And I've talked about this in great detail right, over the videos. And I, did, I think I did a... Yeah, I did some video about right action in depth. Right action, before I started studying Buddhism in depth, I wasn't really realizing what right action is. I thought that just taking care of yourself and your own interests was the correct way. And it was okay to say a white lie here and there uh, in order to gain a promotion or gain a better job. You know, you fake it to make it, all that kind of stuff. I prescribed to that theory for quite some time myself. Uh, unbeknownst um, of the unskillful consequences, uh, the unskillful notion that uh, that followed after that, and and uh, all the lessons I had to learn in order to understand why the Buddha says that right action is basically an action, a verbal action, a mental action, or a physical action that is. 
profitable and skillful for oneself and profitable and skillful for others. Now, this is the thing that I missed, the profitable and skillful for others. Okay, so there's four actions, right? And I'll just revise them here. So it's doing what's profitable and skillful for oneself, but not doing what's profitable, profitable and skillful for others. So in other words, just only take being skillful and profitable for yourself and, and not and just neglecting other people's, uh, I guess, uh, welfare, right? The other thing is, the, the second one is not doing what's skillful and profitable for oneself, but only doing what's skillful and profitable for others. So in other words, neglecting oneself, probably sacrificial, probably altruism. So in other words, you help everybody else, but you don't help yourself. Now, this is not skillful as well. It's not quite balanced. Then the, the, the worst one is uh, not doing what is skillful and profitable for oneself and not doing what is skillful and profitable for others. So that one there is definitely one that I wouldn't recommend. Right? And it's quite obvious, so I don't need to explain that one. So when we're dealing with contracts uh, and when we're dealing with uh, political uh, issues and uh, diplomacy, when countries only serve the interests of themselves uh, or the governments uh, only serve their own interests, which these days it's more about governments serving their own interests against their own people. It's not like our countries, our countries have not become, uh, are becoming more and more divided these days. Although I'm, I'm hopeful and positive that uh, there is uh, a lot of people coming together now and, and understanding this uh, need to be unified and to develop harmony uh, uh, with us all, which is crucial to our development. Now, when you create a contract or you uh, engage in any uh, diplomacy, whether it be in your community, family-wise, in business or anything, diplomacy doesn't have to be just political or just in war. But diplomacy could be even between um, you know, friends, because sometimes there's differences. Even relatives in business, for example, diplomacy is needed. You know, I think diplomacy is also needed from my experience uh, at death, when uh, you know uh, someone dies and they leave their property to their children and the rest of the family, like a will. You know, so diplomacy is is needed there as well because uh, there's been I've seen a, over the over the years I've seen a lot of commotion, a lot of arguments happen over a will. And uh, there's many examples of this, and I'm sure everybody, all of you watching, every single one of you have had an experience where uh, you've seen a family crumble because of a will, right? Uh, a lot of arguments and things like this. So the right action is the way to go here. And <clears throat> you see, I, was, I wasn't aware of this myself. So even when it comes to a will, for example, or, uh, you know, a, I guess a... Uh, sharing of, of funds and things like this, I, we have to abide in right action in order to ha have the best outcome for ourselves and others and, and also to uh, thwart any disharmony, right? The idea is to create less enemies, not more. The idea is to create a better life for ourselves, not a worse life for ourselves. The idea is to create better consequences, right? We can't get out of creating consequences if, if you create an action. Right. So again, like I was saying, a verbal action, a mental action, a physical action, all those three actions, every time one of those actions have been committed, um, there's a consequence. So we want to try to strive to make sure that the consequences are the best possible for ourselves and for everybody else around us. Because when everybody's fed, everybody's happier. Right. But if only a few people get fed and the others starve, right, that's not skillful. That's not good for anybody in the long run. Right. Uh, in the long run, it's really not good for anybody. The ones who are starving will build up resentment and, and other things. And things can get, well, they may not, but some will in terms of uh, where we have like war, where, you know, war does nothing but build resentment. And that's why war is always a failure. And I've done a video on this one. You can go check it out. Um, it's uh, the, 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 the written title is called War is Failure. I suggest you watch that. So diplomacy and right action is important in every endeavor of our life because 
when we're writing contracts or when we're dealing with wills, right? When we're dealing with friends, uh, we're getting involved with friends and agreements. Uh, right action is is definitely is definitely uh, um, uh, how could you say crucial, fundamental, and central to creating a more uh, to to creating har harmony and better consequences. Like for example, when you have an argument with a friend, or you're in disagreement with someone, with a friend or a family member or something like that. Well, this is where diplomacy comes in, but also right action comes in and right speech and right speech. Now, right speech is defined as saying what is accurate, what is correct, what is factual at the right time. And this is important at the right time. When you mix that with right action in, do, in, in acting, what, in, in, in being skillful and profitable, doing what is skillful and profitable for oneself and skillful and profitable for others, right? When you combine these two, what you're doing is creating uh, wealth for yourself, prosperity for yourself, but also for others because you are taking care of other people's interests as well. So when someone is knows that you're taking care of their interests really as well, you'll find that that will create a, a more of a camaraderie but also trust, right? Whereas when you go to contracts, when you when when you get into business contracts, and you know the other party is just going to be uh, fighting for their own interests, and they don't care about your interests, that makes for a pretty hostile uh, environment, and one that I would suggest you should not get into. Same with any friends. If friends are not interested in your welfare as much as their own welfare, then they're really not good friends, right? They're only there to spend your money or be there in the good times, but in the bad times and when you don't have any money, when you need help, they're not there. That's not a good friend, for example. Or <clears throat> when there's disagreement. Now, this is how you test um, your friendships and, and, and all your relationships is what happens when there's disagreement. Are people, are they uh, able to bounce back? Are they able to tolerate it and forgive and bounce back? Um, I guess... There are lines that need to be drawn, and that happens through uh, skillful, skillful means by by talking about it, by creating borders and respecting those borders, right? Okay, but this is how you can tell, <coughs> really, like uh, who's who's interested in your welfare and whose welfare you're interested in. Like people are testing you as well. There are people testing all of us, and we're testing everybody else all the time. That's the reality. I, I, I see that all the time when we get involved with things. Um, there's always a period of human in, the, the human interaction, the human condition, is that we, we're not trustworthy straight away with people we don't know. We're, we're on our guard, and that's natural. That's natural. That's a protective instinct. It's not a violent in instinct. It's a protective instinct. You, you know, when you open, when you let someone into your house, you want to make sure they're not going to come in and steal everything. That's that's not violence. That's a protective instinct. I'll do a video on this one day. I want to call it protection, difference between protection and violence. And I've talked about this before. Now, protection is important. Uh, you know, if you've got uh, people that are vulnerable inside your house, like a uh, like a your, your grandparents are old, or you have little children in your house, you're going to be very careful who you let into your house. This is not an act of violence. This is an act of protection, right? And uh, I'm sure that you lock your door and your windows at night. Why? Because you're violent? No, because you're protecting yourself, right? So these kind of things are, are natural to the human instinct in a lot of ways. And when we're dealing with uh, interests, right, in the what I call in the, in the in the normal world where greed, hatred, and delusion is abundant where craving is is abundant and ignorance of the four noble truths ignorance of right action um, and ignorance of right speech you're going to come across deception you're going to come across people lying and uh, uh, people uh, saying things that aren't true to get ahead right now this is not uh, like a, a, a bashing of of people because like I said before I before I understood uh, Buddhism, not that I understand Buddhism in total, not that I understand the Buddhist teachings in total, for sure. Like, I've still got a long way to go myself. Um, you know, I try never to put myself up on a pedestal here, 
um, <clears throat> just someone who's in robes right now. You know, I'm an arms mendicant. I live off arms. That's about it. Uh, the robes are just uh, something that the Buddha said we have to wear uh, in this life if you want to follow me. So that's that's why I do it. It's uh, it's basically just a, like a uniform, really. But the question is here is the the where 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 uh, deception comes into it is that we constantly uh, are fighting for our own interests, right? When you're in that world, it's a competitive interest. Like it's uh, uh, particularly, it, you can see this in, in competition. It's one team must destroy the other in order to get the trophy or get the reward. It's a constant battle. Like that's seen in, in sports all over the place. It's very evident, right? But that's not really taking any interest in the other person's welfare, is it? Now, we need to look at this and understand this. Now, I'm not saying sport is um, bad or anything like that, but intrinsically, when we get down to the to to the real nitty-gritty of it, uh, I guess Buddha didn't say, didn't suggest his monks should go and play a game of football or soccer or cricket or baseball in order to get enlightened and told us to sit on our butts and do some meditation and focus, right, <laughs> and seclude as much as possible mentally as well. But this is very important to understand that uh, you know, it, it, when you go for a job, right, you, you, you're putting, like if you go to apply for a job, for example, the person applying for a job is going to put their best foot forward, going to get dressed up and look uh, better than usual. So that in itself is a deception, right? And the person looking uh, for someone to work for them is going to look for the person that's going to uh, take a pay, right? But with that pay that that person provide the employer with profit okay so the person the the, the person's going to get a minimal pay and the and, and and the boss or the employer should get profit and we accept that as oh that's just how it is right and that's in every uh, part of the world in every kind of government system it's not just a capitalistic system it's in communism there's a lot of people working for bosses in China, in Laos, for example, with communism or socialist republic, um, so a democratic socialist, socialist democracy, I think Laos is, and in other countries, right? So this this question that we the employee and employer, there's, there's a constant, uh, uh, I guess, not only just deception, but there is an exploitation there. Right? Now, I'm saying that lightly. I'm not saying like it's, a, it's like human trafficking, which is disgusting and, and, and shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't be supported and should be avoided at all costs. It's, uh, it's one of the forbidden uh, livelihoods in Buddhism as uh, the, Buddha, the Buddha set forth. But you know, this, the deception is where you, you, even when you go shopping or when you're doing bargaining, you're trying to get the better deal. You're not really interested in whether the person's making a profit or not or whether they're working hard or not. You're just interested in getting that price that you want most of the time, isn't it? Right? Or unless you go to the supermarket and just accept whatever price is out, but you're still looking for deals. And the person selling the products knows this as well. So they, they put up tricks to make you think you're getting a deal when you're not really getting a deal because they have, they have to do this in order to cover costs. So that's the reality of deception, right? And I hope that doesn't come across too negative now, okay? But this is the world and, that, and, and when we look at it from a fundamental view, it's a sankara, it's a fabrication, it's not self, it's not real, it's fiction, right? It's not liberation, it's not vimuti that comes from within. So how do we deal with... Uh, you know this reality is to understand that deception is 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 part of life not everybody uh, follows uh, right views or right speech or right uh, right actions okay and not many people are even aware of it I wasn't even aware of this I was totally in, in the school of you know you look after yourself you look after your family um, it's okay to charge more this that you look after your... but in the end it doesn't lead to uh, to a, a, a wholesome life in the long run. Like in the long run, you create enemies because people know that you're just serving your self-interest, right? When you know people are serving their own self-interest, it's hard to be, 
it's hard to have great respect for them, right? And this is this is because there's not the understanding that the, there's a big difference when you're dealing with someone who's who's acting skillfully and profitably for themselves, and they will act skillfully and profitable for you too, and you do it for others. There's a big difference. I I, I ask you to try this, and deception too, like um, in, t in in terms of verbal action. Right? In terms of the verbal action, make sure that you're engaging in the right speech, right? That's accurate, that's correct, it's factual, and at the right time. If it's not the right time, then don't say anything, it's better, right? Or find find a way to uh, to do it correctly uh, or to say it in a, in, a, in a manner that's not going to cause problems. And there is the right time, and I've talked about this, so I won't get into that. But what I want to keep hitting at here is the reality of deception right? The reality, it's a reality. And this is something that, it's something that I was doing without even realizing, you know, like it, it, it's more of the, like you think you're doing good because you're working and you're putting in the hours and you're, you know, you're paying your rent or, you, you know, you're getting and, and you're earning your living honestly. Yes, that's good. That's all good. But there's one thing that's, uh, that, that piece that's missing is doing what's skillful and profitable for others. And that's what I found. You may be doing that right now. So good good for you if you're doing that right now. But if you're not, I would suggest it. Because that's going to bring you even more fortune in the long run. And it's going to bring you more sol solidarity in the community. When people know there's someone who's genuine there that's genuinely interested in doing what's profitable and skillful for us for themselves and profitable and skillful for others, that will lead to a... Uh, a lot of prosperity, a lot of development, a lot of growth in a lot of ways. Um, and it takes you out of that greed. It takes you out of that greed and it takes you out of that delusion um, that, uh, you know, you, it's all, you know, you only have to fight for yourself. It's not like that at all. It doesn't have to be anyway. It doesn't have to be. And that's something I've been um, realizing more and more as the years go on, especially being in this life and in this practice. I've realized that the if if the action is not correct, if it's not total, if whatever you say and whatever you do um, is not uh, skillful and profitable for yourself and skillful and profitable for others, it's basically a deception. Or if you're not speaking correctly or accurately or factually at the right time, that's a deception as well. And how many people are doing that? So the reality is there's a lot of people doing this in the world. I was doing it. And sometimes I may be even doing it without even realizing it because it's a habit, right? And something I'm combating as well. So I wish you luck on this um, as well because we have to be strong here to understand what the Buddha is talking about because we're talking about ultimate compassion. We're talking about ultimate goodwill, goodwill for ourselves and goodwill for others, ultimate joy, joy for ourselves and, and appreciation of others. And also equanimity, where we, we, you know, everybody talks about equality, equality, equality. So why are we lying to people? Why are we deceiving people? Why are we not telling people things as they are, right? Or why are we acting only in our self-interests and not caring about other people's interests as well? And this is a big concept in the business world, in economies, especially in government, um, where uh, it's just about self-interest, self-interest, but not just government, because... The government is only a reflection of the people. If the people don't care, well, the government will do what they want to do. It's free money. So this is this is normal. Can't blame people. Can't blame people for um, for doing things, right? You can't blame people for doing things. You have to look at yourself first and understand where you're going wrong. And if you and when you're going wrong, you fix that, and that's how you make the changes externally as well. Right? And that's what I found. When I've stopped engaging in that kind of behavior, I found it quite skillful in a lot of ways because I know now that uh, that real interest is looking after myself and others at the same time where appropriate, wherever I can. And that creates a kind of unity, it creates a harmony, and it creates a, a, a camaraderie, but also creates a prosperity um, around you and for the people that you're associating with as well. And I think this is needed in the world, is it not? Okay, so I hope that uh, this video uh, touches on some subjects that might interest you and might invoke uh, like some reaction and some good insight for you because I think this is really, really important because in every part of our lives, um, 
there's every chance of us being deceptive, acting deceptive, or being deceived. So we must be aware of this and learn how to deal with this. Okay, so on our own part, you know, we, we, we try not to engage with that. And when there's something deceptive come along, when you're not engaging that on anymore, that's actually your protection. You can see that you're being deceived, but not all the time because there are good deceivers out there. Yeah, we can all, we're all naive in a lot of ways. We can all get caught off guard anytime. All right, so, and that's not a good thing. And that's what con artists do. That's what a lot of people do do is they try to catch you off guard, right? That's definitely not right action. And there's a lot of people who do that as well. And this is unfortunate, but this is why, this is why Dukkha exists, right? This is why ignorance exists. People do it not realizing the damage they're incurring, right? So the, the most important thing is yourself not to continue living a deceitful life, not living a, a life that damages other people or yourself. So that's really important in Buddhism. And that's the message I think that I wanted to impart in this video.